Hey everyone, Shade Review here. Today we're doing my top sunglass brands tier list. Now the reason I'm making such a fine tier list is because I am the most qualified person on all of YouTube. As you can see here from my personal collection of sunglasses, I basically own every single brand that I'm talking about in today's video. And again, I am the most qualified person to make this video. I'm sorry I got into some weird character there, uh, but today's video is not absolute. I am just taking a quick look at the logo and then kind of reasoning with myself and with you, the audience, where approximately that brand deserves to be here on my tier list. But but first off, we have thing today's video sponsor, ShadeReviewStore.com, our own website where we sell designer sunglasses just like these, up to 80% off the original MSRP. Again, that is our own website, ShadeReviewStore.com. Check it out. Today's video is just for fun, so don't take it too seriously, and I won't either. All right, so let's see what the first brand here is. It's Maui Jim. Maui Jim makes some really good polarized lenses. The only thing I don't like about Maui Jim is a lot of their frames tend to be oversized, which is definitely a little bit annoying. Uh, so I think they belong over here in the B tier list. Again, they make some of the absolute best lenses possible. But as far as, you know, how long the company's been around for and also some of their styles, and have to leave it over here in the B category. I don't think it deserves to get bumped up to an A. Uh, the next brand we have here is Costa Del Mar. Costa Del Mar, as a lot of you know, was recently bought by Luxottica, and uh, a lot of their sunglasses kind of look like old man sunglasses. Uh, so I'm gonna put these down over here in D. Again, they're still fine. They're really good uh, with the polarization, but as far as styling goes, they don't really do much for me. Next here we have Dita. Dita makes some really, really, really high-end frames. Unfortunately, though, they also are very expensive, around you know 600 to you know a thousand plus dollars. So I think that crazy high price is going to keep them out of the S tier. But I think they definitely belong over here in the A tier. They're just a really, really good company, and unfortunately, they're not really known too much. So the videos that I make on Dita don't get a ton of views. That's why I don't feature them as often on the channel as I do some other brands. But Dita really, really good. I think they belong over here in the A category. Serengeti. Serengeti is really, really great. And I think they belong up here with Maui Jim. I personally tend to like the Serengeti frames a little bit better than the Maui Jim frames, especially what they do with their acetate. Just really, really high quality stuff. Maui Jim kind of focuses on the sport and performance section. And Serengeti, on the other hand, kind of focus more on the actual quality and, you know, kind of styling. Uh, so I think Serengeti definitely belongs to be up here in the bees. Uh, next, we have TBD eyewear, the Spoke Dews eyewear. They make some absolutely beautiful acetate frames that are really, really nice. Everything is made in Italy and they use some really high quality hinges as well. However, they don't have a ton of polarized options and a lot of their sunglasses don't have all glass lenses as well, which is definitely annoying. So I think that puts them over here in the C category. If they offered glass lens options and more polarized options, I think they definitely belong up here in the B, but also they're a relatively new company, so they haven't been around forever as well. And I'm definitely factoring history, price, and you know all that kind of stuff here in my tier list. Uh, next up, we have Mascot. They make some really good sunglasses as well. However, a lot of their stuff is made in China, even though the boat quality is still really good. But I happen to know that a ton of companies use the exact same company that Moscot uses to produce their frames. Uh, so that kind of does kind of water it down a little bit. I think this brand is kind of like a high D, low C, but I'll bump it up here to the C because I really do love a lot of their sunglass frames. The acetate that they use is really beautiful. So I'll leave them up here in C. Uh, next company here is Garrett Light. Uh, we'll move that straight over here to the E section. Uh, Garrett Light, again, makes a lot of the frames in China and they charge like $380, $400, $500 for their frames. So their profit margins are probably absolutely crazy because they're getting them for so cheap and they're selling them for so high. And again, a lot of the styles that they have, I really don't like as well. They don't really fit me or my personality. So not a big fan of Garrett Light. Uh, next up, we have Oliver Peoples. That's gonna go straight here to the S tier. All of people make some of my absolute favorite sunglasses. They just have some really beautiful vintage sunglasses and they've just been around for a very long time. The titanium work that they do is really, really good. And then the acetate frames are really nice as well. I realize that Oliver Peoples is owned by Luxottica and that definitely is a little bit annoying, but man, I absolutely love the brand. And uh, probably some of my favorite sunglasses ever are made by Oliver Peoples. Next we have here is Mr. Light. Mr. Light also makes some really, really nice frames. They make them in Japan. They're actually owned by Garrett Light. But in my opinion, the build quality difference between Garrett Light and Mr. Light 
is like this. It's huge. It's not even close. So I really do actually like Mr. Light. Uh, and I think I'm gonna put them over here in the A tier. They just make some really nice made in Japan frames, high quality acetate, really cool and very innovative styling with Mr. Light. I think they belong here in the A. It's always shocking to me how low here light ranks in my head and how high uh, Mr. Light ranks, but you know, that's how it is. Uh, next we have here is Varnay. Varnay has been making really high quality sunglasses for a very long time. And I'm also French, so I think that goes straight here to the A uh, category. Uh, next up here, we have Randolph. Randolph makes all their sunglasses in Massachusetts, which isn't far away from my hometown. And the frames are built out of very, very high quality materials. They do really nice gold plating and just really high quality lenses as well. Uh, I think I'm gonna put them over here in the A tier. Now, the reason they didn't quite make the S tier is because unfortunately they don't have any titanium frame options. They're not doing anything too, too crazy, even though the build quality is really, really good. So because of that, I'm gonna leave them here in the A uh, tier. Not quite up there with all our people who do some beautiful acetate and metal stuff. Randolph basically only does metal frames, uh, but they do them really well. So I'm gonna put them over here in the A tier. Now, I might actually have to resize some of these uh, to add some room here to the A tier. I don't know what uh, brands I have left, but I probably might have a couple more over here in the A tier. So I'm just gonna quickly uh, resize these. So part of my quick little uh, cleanup job here in the A tier, uh, the next brand, Ray-Ban. Ray-Ban is the godfather of the sunglass industry. Basically, they've been around for a very, very long time. And honestly, they've made hundreds and hundreds of timeless looking designs that are still very popular to this day. I absolutely love Ray-Ban, even though I don't love what they've been doing with their Chinese sunglasses and they're making their frames cheaper and cheaper. However, their history is just absolutely crazy and the eyewear industry, in my opinion, would not be what it is today if it wasn't for Ray-Ban. So even though the build quality is just average and everything like that, I have to put them up here in the S tier just because of what the brand Ray-Ban means to the eyewear industry. And I just love the brand. I really do love the brand, even though there are a ton of downsides and they also are owned by Luxottica. When I think of sunglasses, I think of Ray-Ban. I think that's the same way for most people as well. Just an absolutely iconic brand that I really do, you know, like. Now, personally, when it comes to Ray-Bans, I absolutely love the vintage styles as well, which again, really elevates it as well. Because when I think of Ray-Ban, I also think a lot about their vintage styles that I really do love and enjoy and own a ton of as well. So definitely here up at the top of the list. Now, next we have here is Prada. Prada makes some decently, you know, high quality frames, nothing too crazy. Uh, they are owned by Luxottica, but I do love a couple of their styles. I'm gonna put them over here in E where they belong with Garrett Light. Nothing too crazy, you know, kind of generic, nothing over the top, and their prices are very high considering what they are. So I'm gonna put them over here in the E list. Uh, next up we have here is American Optical. Now American Optical has been around for like 200 years, crazy, crazy, beautiful history. I really do love the brand American Optical. They're coming out with more and more acetate styles and metal styles as well. I love the looks of the original pilot and of course the Saratogas as well. So I think they belong up here between B and A. All their frames are made in America and they actually do have new owners. So I just think the build quality is gonna keep getting better and better because they are a new company. Uh, so I think they're gonna make some improvements along the way. And because of their history and everything like that, I think they belong here in the A tier list. All right, next up we have here is Oakley. Oakley was probably like a top tier company if I were to make this video like 10 years ago or 15 years ago. However, the mighty has fallen and Oakley's just not what it used to be. A lot of the frames are being made in China and they have a little badge in the frames that say assembled in America, which basically means that an American pops in the plastic lenses and puts on the temples. It's, it's honestly embarrassing and they haven't done much that I actually like in my opinion. So they belong here down with Costa. Um, I do love some of their classic frames like the frog skins and a ton of others. Uh, and I do like the old ones that were made from like, you know, the early 90s all the way to maybe 2010-ish. Oakley is owned by Luxottica and I think they bought them like back in 2007, but it took a while for their quality kind of drop off a cliff. And now like I said, a lot of them are being made in China. The coatings on the lenses fall off. And that's why I haven't reviewed a ton of Oakley sunglasses lately because you know, I just really don't like them uh, that much anymore. Uh, next up we have this. This, uh, this company, um, and we're, we're just gonna move that over here to a separate list. Anyways, moving on, we have Gucci. Gucci makes some really beautiful sunglasses, and they are made by Kering Eyewear as I'm filming this video. 
They do some really cool things uh, with their frames. I really do like Gucci. Uh, some of their styling isn't quite for me, but the build quality is really good. The prices are a little bit high. I think I'm gonna leave them here in the C category uh, just because of the prices. And a lot of those styles are definitely not for me. So I think they belong over here in the C category. We have Dolce & Gabbana. Dolce & Gabbana is also owned by Luxottica. The build quality isn't really that good. They're kind of just generic uh, like Prada. So I think that's gonna leave them over here in the E category. All right, and the last brand we have here is Persil. Persil is one of my favorite sunglass companies. They make some absolutely iconic sunglass frames like the Persil uh, 649 and the 714, which is the first ever pair of folding sunglasses. Just a really great company. Almost everything they make is made in Italy other than some uh, very special editions that were made in Japan, uh, which have titanium in them, which is understandable. Almost everything they make have a beautiful acetate material and all glass lenses. They never make any sunglasses in China whatsoever at all which is really good. The only thing uh, that I think is holding it back from being an S is the fact that Persil sunglasses definitely copy Ray-Ban with a lot of their styles. They're basically just complete, you know, blatant ripoffs. But of course, Persil is also owned by Luxottica. And also, Persil did a uh, collaboration uh, with Dolce & Gabbana, and those sunglasses are absolutely heinous. They look absolutely horrible. It's it's really disgusting what they've done with Dolce & Gabbana. As you can tell, I am very unhappy about it. So for the fact that they partnered up with Dolce & Gabbana, and the fact that they do make a lot of uh, copies of Ray-Ban sunglasses, even though they are both owned by Luxottica, so it's not illegal or anything like that. It just kind of brings it down a little bit. So I'm actually gonna leave them right here in the middle. I don't know if it's loud, but I'm gonna leave them right in the middle between the S and the A category, because in my opinion, they definitely are the top of the A category. They're better than everything in the A category, but because of those downsides, they can't quite make it into the S category. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this list in the comment section down below. I think this list might be shocking to a lot of people the fact that I have Ray-Ban here in the S uh, tier and some of the other really high quality brands that make better sunglasses than Ray-Ban lower. But again, I'm factoring the history and what they mean to the eyewear industry and what each brand means to me personally. And uh, yeah, that's my list. Uh, let me know if you disagree with me in the comment section down below. And if you do disagree with me, let me know which pair you think I have most wrong and where you think it belongs on the list. Well, that's all you have for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give me a big thumbs up down below. And of course, make sure to hit the subscribe button and then you'll be notified every single time I upload a brand new video just like this one to my YouTube channel. Again, thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.